welcome to our rig rundown. Let's go. Let's go. So here we have our 100 series Land Cruiser set up with bull bar, brush bars and side steps. We've got the Terraloom lights on the front there. We've also got a King's light bar up the top. But our trusty rumper winch never fails. Lights are awesome. GME antenna had a bit of a slip when we were setting up the drawers in the back had the plywood on the roof and it slipped off and bent it but still does the job and then we've got 33 inch maxis all terrain tires just got the wetsuits drying at the moment just on basic steel rims so perfect so to add to the rig rundown we have the back section of the car which is the tailgate where the boot is got the bed up here during the day when we're driving that's completely covered with all our stuff that is currently in the front seat so we don't really see the bed during the day but then we move it all and nice and cozy at night we sleep with our heads up this end just a little bit more discreet we get a bit more foot room because we can move the seats forward and those lids are down when we sleep next we have the drawers so, so number one this one is pretty much utensils, kitchen supplies, pots and pans, neutral bullet we haven't used, knives, spare kind of lubes, alcohol, all the things we might need for the car, soldering iron, tape measure, just all really practical utility kind of things in that drawer. First aid kit, of course, is also in there. Next we have our food slash dry kind of drawer where we keep all our sauces, salt, pepper, lots of cans of beans and things, protein powder, you know, just like a pantry drawer, cutlery, hand sanitizer, etc. Then we have the fun, the clothes. This is Arthur's wardrobe looking very nice and messy. So we've only That's got one, one drawer each for our clothes, but they do tend to spread themselves around the car every now and then. And then this is my wardrobe drawer, which is a little bit neater, but it kind of has to be because I pack a lot in there. Very, very dense with clothing. And then next part of the tailgate section is our tools, spares, etc. area. So we just open these latches, open her up. So it's literally just the tailgate, but it's cut out all the metal inside so it's just a very large long drawer well not drawer compartment and yeah heaps of straps and things if anything is to go wrong are kept in this drawer yeah so we got snatches winch block winch remote we got the wireless remote got our little like key lock got a hammer brush another snatch d shackles most four-wheel driving stuff we had our oil spares and like we've got some belts and stuff hidden in there as well so things go wrong we're set but we just did an oil change the other day so we should be good she should be good but that is the back section we have storage channels down each side here so jet boils in there some bags for rubbish jerry can we pump our water out of that jerry can just to fill up drink bottles and things and down this side just some snacks at the ready gas canister book it's kind of like a bedside table for me in there and just spare stuff that we don't use every day and that we can store down those channels but every piece of room in this car has been used to its maximum capacity take over as we move on to some of the electrical stuff and i'll explain how it all works what we've got in the setup and how we how we use it so at the back on either side we have a little box you've got USB-C and normal USB and cigarette socket it also comes with a voltage meter and on both sides we have those up here we've also got our inverter switch so if we want to turn that on to have AC power so we can charge laptops and whatnot with a cord that we've put out here so if we want to be working at the back we can work at the back with AC power moving around to the side doors on both sides we have an angle fridge these were from our old camp trailer 
and then also more ports. So we've got again the USB-C, USB and cigarette socket and that is on both sides of the car. And so in the day we have the lids of the fridges open so that we have access to our fridges. So for example, just like boom, there we go. Nice fresh food in this one. The other side's got a bit less in it at the moment. And yeah, we'll skip to the next segment. So when we roll our mattress back, as you can see there, it allows us to enter this middle storage compartment. So in here we have kind of warm clothes and things that we don't really use all that often. Got some of Lily's art gear. And then on this side, this is where the magic happens. We've got a BC to DC 40 amp red arc charger and that accepts solar input. So on the side here, we've got our solar that runs through the car and then up to the roof. Into there, we've got our fuse block. So that runs all of these little ports around the sides of the cars. Um, and then in here, we've got a 100 amp hour pylon tech lithium battery, smart battery. Got a little button there so we can see how much charge we got. Currently she's charging, so a bit low. We'll close that back up. And then here we have a 1200 watt inverter. So that is capable of running a Nutribullet. We haven't actually used the Nutribullet just yet, but perfect for charging our laptops and nice smart devices that do need that pure sine wave um, alternating current. Also just got our fuses in here, there and there for the mains coming from the engine to the charger. So when the car's driving with the charger accepts input from the engine and then it also accepts the input from the solar. It likes to predominantly take from the solar. So on like a low day when there's not much solar, we'll unplug the solar and then just pump it with the car while we're driving but when it's sunny we just like have it plugged in all the time the solar just tops it up so overnight the fridges will run down the battery pretty hard as we're running two um, but then come the morning if it's a nice sunny day like it is today boom you're back at 13.1 which is pretty decent by the end of the day we usually sit around 13.3 volts so pretty decent charge and with the 40 amp, we can just absolutely smash power in there when we need it. That's about it for now over here. We also sometimes just plug in our power board here because we can have a slot there to plug in our AC. And then we just put our laptops and drone batteries and whatnot on the bed while we drive. Charge. Quickly while we're on this side of the car, we have a little King's shower tent and then we just chuck our fishing rods that go inside the car during the day. And then we'll just set up our shower awning. Um, super easy. I've also put custom wiring in that so that if we are showering at night, we just open this little side window and then put that in and plug that into here. And then boom, we have power and a light in our shower. That's also wired up to the back here. So we've got light strip here, boom. And then we've got light strips on the awning that I've put in, one, two, three. That just plugs into the side door there. And then as easy as that. Open, one person job. Easy as we just peg down these two points usually so the wind doesn't catch it and blow it up. But they have little pouches for our amenities in there. Hang up the shower head on that end. Yep. And there's a little light up there. In so. there. So you just hang it on that. It's got like a little Velcro strap. Boom. Light bar. Perfect. Good to go. Very easy. So while Lily just rolls that up, I'll show you what we have in here. So behind this main seat, we've got more storage. So we've got tools, some snorkeling gear, some film cameras. Um, skateboards and then a few other things on the other side. The barbecue also goes in on the other side behind the passenger seat and then down here we've got spear gun and pole for setting up the top roof cage, um, pegs for the awning and yeah it's pretty pretty simple pretty easy keep things quite accessible so we've got sun cream in the doors and hand sanitizer 
adjustable wrench for gas and whatnot. Also, we found that we had issues before the trip with these automatic lights on the doors. So I just dremeled out little slots and then have put in a switch in all the doors. So we can now turn those off so they don't run our battery flat, which was an issue. So yeah, here we have my side of the bed. So another fridge, boom, boom. There we go, food's in there. Um, usually our extension cord goes in that middle compartment, but we had it out the other day for charging. And then our barbecue here just slots down in there. Pretty perfect. And yeah, we've just got things quickly accessible in the sides. So water bottles and just like things that you need by your bed. And then moving on to the front, during the day when we are set up, we have all our things in the front. So it's mainly just a few backpacks and the guitar and some dry food. So it only takes us five minutes or so to move across from the back to the front to set up. Mm -hmm. and, then we just... and that's for sleeping too, not during the day. Yeah, that's mainly only for sleeping. So when we're in the day, we'll show you a car setup when we are for our driving setup. So on the road, yeah. yeah. So we have a big snorkel here. We haven't actually had to use it yet, but always good to have a snorkel if there's the potential of doing a river, creek, any kind of water crossing. Then obviously just a nice sun visor to stop it getting absolutely boiling in the car during the day. Also gives us some privacy when we're sleeping in there. Makes it a bit more discreet. And then we've added this big shield visor thing. So it's a lot more fuel efficient with that. The air just travels up, continuing off the windscreen rather than just hitting a big block kind of thing of the roof cage. And then on each side, we have made these fly screen mosquito nets. They're just magnetic. All around the windows is magnetic. So you just cut it out to your size and shape and then put those on. They've been life-saving because we keep the windows open when we sleep, but bugs can't get in. And we also have a big one that goes on this back section when we're sleeping if we need extra airflow. And then of course our Darchi 270 degree awning. Yeah, it is the best purchase we've made other than the drone. The drone is probably our number one purchase of the trip or for the trip. This thing can be set up with one person. We've got these structural aluminium bars, swings out super easy can be freestanding but then these the poles, poles that you just boom nope. do it, put it down and then if you're setting up for the night literally three pegs boom you're done and with the fly screens Lily mentioned you can buy those in a kit from Bunnings and then just make it yourself but a pro tip from us is just get a bit of silicon to rub around the edges it makes the stickiness yeah, stick the a hell of a lot not better so good so these like we literally leave them on all the time doing like pushing 140 on an overtake on the highway mate don't even move so perfect so obviously all the table chairs awning etc is set up now because we're sitting tight for the day here um, but we did film a little time lapse yesterday of us putting all that out so you can see just how quick and easy it is and how efficient the setup works so we'll insert that now While we're down here, we've just got our beautiful 1HD FTE. 
that she pushes a lot of power. Big turbo diesel. We've also got a little ARB diff breathers in there. So obviously you can get yourself a snorkel for going in creeks and river crossings, but if your diff's sucking in water, you're screwed. So get yourself a little diff breather. Can be done yourself or just get your local mechanic to set that up. So this bad boy needs two big batteries to crank her over, but then we've got our auxiliary battery connected here and then cabled down along the chassis and up. And yesterday we did a nice little oil change so she's running well. And then we've just got our lights and everything set up to the engine and the antenna. So pretty prime, never skips a beat. Beautiful weapon. Yeah. You don't even understand how many people come along and think that this thing on the roof is a rooftop tent. I'm unsure how they think it's rooftop tent because it doesn't look like any conventional one. Anyway, what we've got up here is a rhino rack cage and then I have made a custom alloy cage on top. So then we've got our surfboards on the top there and then within it, I can stack my three surfboards in there and then lock them up on here. And then obviously as Lily explained earlier, we've got the big lip on the front as it makes it just a little bit more fuel efficient and our light bar on the top there. Obviously got our long boards up the top and then also on the other side in the cage, we have our Jolka hot tap box. So that fits in there perfectly. We've also got space for three extra jerry cans. So we run two water cans and a spare fuel can as well as a nine kilo gas bottle. So we'll open that up now for you so you can have a look and see what we've got up there. So I'd be screwed for this part of the car if Bean wasn't here. The roof cage is very heavy and every time we have to open it, we have to unlock the three padlocks. We keep it locked up just in case you never know what people want out of your car. So it's good to keep everything locked. But we have this little pipe pole that holds up the roof while we're in there doing things. We did try gas struts, that was unsuccessful. So the manual way is how it goes, but we'll just unlock that and Bean will do the heavy lifting to show you what's in there. There we go, all right, Lily passed me the go. So here we are up the top. In here we have space for our gas, We've got fuel, two extra water jerrys, jock hot tap in its box. We've got our spare swag canvas, which is where our mattress comes from. Then we have our three surfboards or my three surfboards stacked up here. We've got a crab net and we've got tracks for getting out of those sticky situations. We've also got our thousand watt solar panel rigged up there. And then that comes in the back door and then through the cabin wall and then down to the side section here where it meets up with the charger. So pretty good setup, pretty easy for us to use. Obviously young, so I can climb up there, push that cage open and close pretty easily. And then when we need to get gas down for cooking and whatnot, I just jump up there, grab it out, hand it down to Lily. So that's the only pain in the ass, but what can you do, you know? We're pretty self-sufficient other than the old Woolies fill up thousand dollars worth of fuel every couple of weeks and yeah it's finding a tap to get some water sometimes that is actually an issue so don't take water for granted anymore guys one 20 liter jerry is like pretty much a two minute shower so we have it on a very low water pressure be too, conscious so. of your water usage conservation life on the road definitely makes you realize how much you use and helps you be a little bit more conservative in your day-to-day -day life, which is good. So yeah. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that the car is on a two-inch Dobbison's lift and we have a Torquet three-inch uh, turbo back exhaust. So that makes it sound absolutely prime. Beautiful setup. Thank you to the guys at Torquet and Maxis and Dobbison's, everyone who makes quality gear. We haven't had a problem yet. Tires are absolutely excellent. I've mountain biked on Maxxis for years and they are top notch. So, perfect setup. Um, is there anything we'll else show to show you? you? We'll show you the inside of the cab, obviously, when we're driving next and everything's moved out of there so you can get an idea of what it's like for us 
for at least probably two hours a day just driving yeah and what the setup is like in there yeah we'll show that setup that'll be our driving setup so let's get at it and go do some four being yeah just wanted to add as well that all of the electrical stuff i taught myself and then bought all the components and wired up myself lily and i spent countless hours wiring up all the little led strips and whatnot um, and making these little power boxes. These were handmade, Lily's house in Bathurst. And then we just got these guys all from Steady. So just boom, plug and play, pretty easy to use. Um, but if people are interested in that, then we'll do a proper, proper rundown video and you can explain all the ins and outs of the wiring so people can follow that and almost do it yourself from the manual. Yeah, pretty much if you guys want to see that, we will make a video on how to set up your 12 volt so you can get out there on the road with a fridge or charge your phones, charge your laptops and have auxiliary power because it's actually not too hard and we can explain it pretty easily because we've got the setup to show for. And yeah, if anyone like Red Arc or whatnot is watching and wanna hit us up, we'll happily work with you guys because your products are top notch. They do not lie, you pay a good dollar for them, but man, they do not skip a beat. So real good stuff. And, and if you do it yourself, you can afford the real good stuff, which is... Yeah, exactly. That's that's another thing I took into account. It was like I can pay somebody about two and a half grand to set me up a basic setup, or I can spend the same amount of money and then have something that's fully custom and perfect for the exact needs of the consumer, which is us. And we yeah. also built the roof cage myself. So thank you to Bunnings, just basic aluminium and screwed together and bolted and nutted together with a couple of pop rivets and so far we've done some pretty long drives on corrugations and whatnot and hasn't really skipped a beat so done well for a little job at home yeah so pretty prime yeah other than that like so i got the tires and lift and everything done the snorkel done for the guys at arb but fitting all the awnings and yeah, again, the roof cage and all the electricals and the rear tailgate has all been done by myself with the trusty helping hands of Lily. on the road and living in two front seats for half of most your days results in a bit of chaos but this is a reality usually this person whoever's in the passenger seats cops the dirty washing that needs to be done when we find a sink got a few water bottles for the day sometimes some snacks just the usual car stuff cab gps aircon you know all those things camera gear we got cameras gopro spare batteries we've got more auxiliary power here so we can charge phones gopros and whatnot off that um this was stuck here until the stickiness dropped and so it just chills there now um and then i'll take you around to my side where the driving happens we split the driving but we've just got like toothbrushes and surfboard fins because obviously my fins don't fit in the top there and then in here just got the drone at the ready all the time Fishing knives, dive knives, you never know when you're gonna need to stab something. Um, ab shells from when we got some abalones. Yeah, pretty much more camera gear, phone, wireless charger, pretty set up. We're pretty spoiled. It is a large front seat area and quite comfy compared to most cars. So we do pretty well in here. It's not too hard to spend long hours in here. One thing I didn't mention earlier that I should have is that when our inverter's on, it's nice with a Bluetooth app, so you can track exactly how much current is being drawn from the battery, as well as how much voltage the battery's sitting on, and 
I can also turn it on and off from the phone. So I'll show you that here. So you can see now we've got the laptops on charge and the voltage is actually quite low. So I've unplugged the solar even though the sun's beaming. That is because charger prefers to take solar over car input. So while we're driving, I'll just unplug it and then just pump it with a bunch of current from our alternator. Um, and then you can see that we're inverting and then the output current draw and then boom, I can pretty much just go boom, boom on off eco mode you name it can also put dynamic shutoffs and have all control over the inverter obviously we never leave the inverter on just idling because it still does waste a lot of energy converting from dc to ac so that's why we've got the switch at the back there so we can just boom boom switch it on or off mm -hmm. but as easy as that really now we'll hit the road, so let's and start her up. And one more cab essential I've thought of, it's this bird book. We use this all the time. If you don't know your wildlife, a big wildlife book would be great, but it's mainly birds that we have trouble with. And this is so handy because we see a funky bird, we look it up and then we know that we've seen it. It's pretty fun. A little activity to do. Let's go hit the road. Like and subscribe, tell us what you want to see. Hit yeah. us up in the comments, just give us any feedback you can all more than welcome so we'll see you in the next one Beep.